Good morning, friends. This is Alexi Bailey, your host, and this is the Tell It Like It Is podcast. I have a very special guest for you today, Natalia Maldonado. How are you, Natalia? Hello, so happy to be here. Thank you for having me. <laughs> yes. So, Natalia, I, um, I knew you when you were in New York, and you were always like a great energy and you did a lot of inspirational things online. And I think you, I think you, uh, you made a lot of people cry. You helped a lot of people through a lot of things, you know, and we're all in this journey together. Yes, we are. And I, I didn't make them cry on purpose. It was just as a, as a release, <laughs> uh, a healing, a healing journey, which I, I always feel uh, crying is definitely a form of courage. Um, anytime you can, can cry, it really is vulnerable, but vulnerability is courageous and bold. So um, yes, a lot of my events ends up with people crying, but in a good way. <laughs> Absolutely. You know, a large part of, what I see myself doing is being a conduit for healing. And, you know, people are still coming to terms with their brokenness and you have to embrace your brokenness. It's a part of the journey. And so much of um, finding yourself and growing and is coming from your childhood and working through these things and trauma and, so it's important to have people who can kind of say, I've been where you are, you know, I've been there and just kind of cry it out with you. Mm, amen, absolutely. Um, so I know that you do a lot of fitness, right? As well as nutrition, is that right? Right, so uh, at, at this moment, um, I do online coaching uh, that includes movement and affirmations. So there is fitness involved, we call it spiritual fitness and yoga. Um, I, I do believe uh, moving the body is extremely important um, every single day, whatever level you're at, whatever the body can do at that time. Um, and also, uh, I am not a dietitian or nutritionist, but I, I'm a holistic health coach. And um, so I do help people it's not about meal plans, but really uh, help them with the relationship with food and be more mindful when they're eating. And then just create it more of a guide of, of listening to them. And I, I help them with also um, intermittent fasting. That's been a major part of my healing process. So um, that's been part of uh, the coaching also. Um, we, we know what to do, right? So what's getting in our way? Hmm. Well, I just want to start um, again, just thank you for having me, whoever's watching uh, your audience. I, I, uh, that question is a loaded question, right? There's so much these days. Uh, but uh, just so you can, they know a little bit of my background. Um, I'm originally, I'm here based in Miami, Florida, but uh, originally from uh, the Bronx, Bronx, New York. And, and um, that's why you mentioned New York. Um, I was in the military, um, the Air Force for four years. And then I was in uh, the New York City Police Department for seven. Uh, I ended up falling in love uh, with Bikram yoga, which is a hot yoga. Mm. And um, I always say Bikram yoga found me, right? And so um, at the time I was a police officer, I, I already knew it wasn't like a, I wasn't a lifer. I wasn't going to be there for long. I just, I didn't know what avenue. I didn't know why. I didn't know um, exact answers, but that's what yoga brought to me it brought an openness and questioning and um then uh after that i, I did uh, make the courageous move after getting certified as an instruct yoga instructor a health coach i i went full force and i went into health and wellness and that was back in 2012 and so with everything um you know the journey has brought ups and downs twists turns unexpected challenges um here we are talking the question was what is getting our way and a lot of times it's us it's um the the mental destructive you know mindset and and i would say the mental activity that usually is not helpful the the voices that usually are not helpful and when the internal voices 
in our minds are not helpful, they they're, can be quite destructive, then all of a sudden what's um, mirrored or what can be really loud, even louder, are the external voices, right? Showing evidence that no, we're not good enough, no, we're not worthy, and then you and then right away the language is, you see, I knew it. I knew I knew I wasn't worthy. I knew I wasn't good enough. And um, that has happened to me multiple times. Like, you know, first time was, you know, um, so many times, but a really major um, uh, <laughs> barrier that I had was when I, I remember just not wanting to be a police officer anymore. And all of a sudden it's like, oh my God, but I, I did the academy and, and my mom is really proud of me and you know, all these different things, but I put all this time in it. Oh, but the benefits and the pension and no, 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 this is what I'll do. I'll, I'll study to be a sergeant. When I'm a sergeant, it's better, you know? And I put all this time into, you know, into training. To, when already knew my heart knew this isn't for you, which there's amazing cops out there. There are good cops, there are good police officers who are meant to do this. Um, there was just a pull um, to do something else and so and when it was clear clear as day that yeah I didn't want to be a cop I was my own barrier right I made all these other excuses but I was the one um, that took I finally did it, it took years for me to actually you know um, uh, these early retirement right um, uh, it took seven years I knew within two years I knew within two years but it took me seven to get out so um, so yeah so honestly today uh, with everything that's going on, um, there may be external circumstances that may be showing people, holy crap, like <laughs> there's a lot of chaos going on and this is why I can't do that. You see, this is why I can't do what I love. I, I can't go here. I can't because there's a lot of external things. But at the same time, um, with the I teach people growth mindset or what I call wellness warrior mindset, it's just when there's a problem, how can we find a solution? And if there's a challenge, okay, this challenge is going to help me evolve. The very prayer that I've been praying every single day, what if this is the challenge that's going to help me get through the hump? So I hope that in the long <laughs> answer, but most of the time it's us. <laughs> I mean, so much of this is, it's like, I, I feel like we're all going, obviously we're all human and we're all going through life you know, but somehow people start to think like their problems is unique. It's completely different from what someone else is going through. And we kind of tend to isolate ourselves and try to deal with it on our own. And like, we make the problem worse instead of just talking about it, you know, trying to, you know, do what we can, but somehow all of these things, you know, the, the mom who we made proud and, you know, the external factor of needing money, it gets in our way and we, we struggling within ourselves when the answer is obvious, you know, go do something else. And that, that's what causes a lot of our struggle is not coming to terms with the obvious. Yeah, because sometimes men, sometimes it's almost too simple, right? Sometimes the answers are right in front. We're like, nah, I can't, no way, you know? And uh, I, I found that to happen many times. Um, it, it's so simple. It's simple, like um, there there was um, so a really simple example is like, the, let's say we're craving change or we're craving um, just guidance and I remember there was this book, it's called um, A Course in Miracles, and uh, I purchased it in 2014. It was a very um, crazy time emotionally for me, and, and um, I opened the book because I wanted a miracle. I was expecting a miracle. I didn't understand one thing I said. I couldn't comprehend it. I was like, this is too deep. I don't know what they're talking about. Close the book, put it on my bookshelf still craving a miracle, still wanting to feel different and going to all these different things. And every, a lot of the books that I have picked up kept quoting this particular book. Can I just tell you that book has traveled with me all over and I did not, I finally started making, like reading it, but then putting in the time to understand it. Read one line, be okay with reading one line be patient enough and then go research what does this one line really mean and then hearing you know reviews something like that and, and i mean meaning it took time and i wanted a quick fix i wanted no 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 no. i want tell me what to do 
And so I, and I, I feel that's major where a lot of times um, when there's this, a problem, the solutions, right? Like the solution for me have been on my bookshelf for all those years, but I didn't because like really life, like gut wrenching, knocked me, knocked me down in 2019 with a, a cancer diagnosis. And I really wanted a miracle. I was like, all right, I'm, I'm going to get this book. I'm going to, you know, I'm going to open it and I'm going to stay here until I understand it and I'm going to do the work. And it came, it, that's what it came down to line by line creating mentors, groups, communities to help me understand what is it that I was supposed to be doing, understanding. And I use that as just a message in general. Like the answer could be right in front of you, the person, the teacher, the mentor, whatever. But sometimes it's like, nah, I can't. No, and, and you're like searching all over the place. But if we just hone in, if we just focus and do the work. Well, doing the work is not easy. Doing the work is really tough. You know, the work is... It's a lot of pain, tears, you know, you have to turn off the TV, turn off your phone, you know, stop hanging out with people, like sit in a room with a diary and a journal and like do a lot of workouts on your own. Like the work is a lot of, you know, eat a lot of vegetables, you know, stop going to your favorite restaurants. Like the work is like, it's hardcore. It's not just all oh, the easy solution, right? Right. You make it sound so scary, but I swear, you don't have to make those. It depends on the person and, and what they're craving. And, and you don't have to make such hardcore changes in your life. Right? Gradually, gradually. Depending on the circumstance, right? Some, some people are just so done with suffering because that's what it comes down to. That we're suffering. We're suffering with anxiety. We're suffering with, with depression, with fear. The, the unknown, we're suffering. And so either we continue to suffer and make small changes so we can lessen the suffering and then dabble, go back and forth, which I've mm -hmm. been there, or you're saying enough is enough. Like I'm done. I'm done with this life. I'm done with being spoken to like this. I am done being treated like this. I am done showing up and creating insanity. And, and so it depends where you're at. Right. So then when you're when you want to stop the suffering, you distance yourself from people who aren't helping you. You distance yourself from, you know, conversations that are actually pulling your energy, right? Draining you food that's draining you and killing you. It, it's just it's it's either a switch or it's kind of like it's OK. It's either a, a switch on and off or it's the dimmer. You know, the dimmer, it's like, you know, little by little and then little by little or it's like, boop, I'm done. So it, we're, it, it's, it's, you know, it's how, it's how you want to handle it and what's going to be long lasting for you. Sorry about that. No, you can. So I, if you ask me, Alexi, what do I think? What, what, what am I thinking? I'm thinking that, you know, instead of going it alone, like I said, locking yourself away, I, I, I like the idea of these spiritual workshops, these mm -hmm. things where you're doing it together and, mm -hmm. you know, finding wholeness together. Like that's, that's what I'm about, you know? And I think I'm still, I'm still, I'm just sounding the, the battle cry saying, let's all do it together instead mm -hmm. of, mm -hmm locking ourselves away and doing right. it on our own. I, I agree with that. I, and I think we're all, all, all on, as leaders, we're on that same mission to, to stand together, to, to have these conversation and create change. But I am also a big advocate. So when I host challenge groups, when I have these workshops, I'm a big advocate of, um, creating making sure um our challengers create space and time by themselves and sometimes you know isolation is not a bad thing there's there's there there's positivity in that but it is not to say you're alone it's not to if if, if you find yourself driving yourself crazy it's not it's not forever but the, it some people are in much need of just like what what is your voice like mute everything outside like what do you want what do you like some people have no idea what they want because 
there's so much talk and even at spiritual workshops, right? Sometimes when you, it's too much group and too much talking, where's your voice? And so I'm a big advocate in creating that space and time presence with the nature, like just kind of like hear your voice and hear a higher power's voice, right? What is trying to, you, you said it, you're a conduit, right? What's, kind of, what's trying to come through you, channel through you? And then, man, when you go to these workshops, you get fired up, you, you, you're, you feel even more fueled, and then again, you create that space. So I believe it's a balance of, of both. That's why for me on a daily basis, the morning is like, is my baby, like the morning time, just kind of like, what's, what's Natalie's voice? Like, what is my voice saying, you know? And then, and then I try to be like, okay, Natalia, shut up. I want to hear God's voice. God, I want, I want to feel your presence right now. You know, that's what meditation is, right? Feeling the active presence. If, you, if it's God, if it's higher power, whatever, it's source energy. But that stillness. Mm -hmm. um, one of the things that a lot of people struggle with is relationships. Um, finding yourself, finding a partner. You know, there's a huge amount of pressure to get married by a certain age and, you know, have kids and like, and I think that pushes a lot of people into the wrong, they feel this unspoken pressure, right? And some of it's spoken, of course, but it's like, and it's a real thing. So how did- oh, You went, uh, I can't hear you. So? Oh, there you go. It was cutting in and out. <laughs> go ahead. So how do you, like, did, did you have those kinds of pressures? Like, how do you, did, how did you deal with that? Of, of um, timeline, you mean timeline and to get in a relationship? Right, like, exactly. Did you? No, thank goodness. Um, I never, I never felt pressured. I'm an only child. Um, my mom raised me as a single mom. So it wasn't that there was, you know, pressure to get married. I never, ever felt that. Um, but I did, uh, this, I'm on my second marriage and, and um, I married, I fell in love with a woman and falling in love with a woman definitely changed the, <laughs> it brought up some concerns for my mother because she always thought, you know, oh my God, I was going to have grandchildren. And, and so once she said that, I was like, it, you know, it's, don't worry, like whether from I was with a man or a woman, like I, I didn't want to have children. So I was like, that's not me marrying a woman is not stopping you from being a grandmother. Like, so that was the only thing that really came up. Timeline was like uh, kids, but not, you know, but um, I never felt forced. Thank goodness my, my family of, is filled with women, like very independent women and um there was never a, a force. I have to say, though, um, being a romantic, my I I I was always very like uh, a romantic and and love the chick flicks and love the happy endings. For myself, I did put pressure on myself and and you know finding the soulmate and you know magnetizing you know someone that I can partner with and and feel connection, the physical, emotional, and, you know, as much as I love to work out, you know, stay athletic, like, there was, I put a little pressure on myself for that, but nothing external, thank, thank goodness, um, and then with, with everything that I know now, with, um, everything I've learned, and how much energy I put into other people, I've recognized the most beautiful relationship that I can have is one with myself and how I see myself and how I'm taking care of myself. And in that, this is for anyone who feels pressure. Um, may you, may you date yourself. May you love yourself so much that it's just naturally you will magnetize someone so beautiful with such a beautiful soul that because you take of your, take care of yourself so well, that they know how to treat you and respect you and because you do it for yourself. That there, the idea, when I think about it now, thank God, like I, I'm so grateful for my wife. We, we, we really, it's very like, um, 
the opposite of what I had in my first marriage is very much about communication. It's not perfect. It's messy. It can, you know, there's ups, there's downs. We've gone through a lot and I'm grateful for it because there's just this rawness. There's just this is us. There's no, um, there's just nothing perfect about it. Just that we're here for each other. And, um, and I think I have to say the reason why I was able to be like that was after my first marriage, I had to recognize, damn, like I really have to make sure that I take care of myself. I have to make sure that, you know, I love myself and um, I like who I see in the mirror, you know? Um, so yeah, for anyone who's feeling pressure, I, I just feel like, we're especially, oh, what I was trying to say was, you know, dating now, I feel, you know, uh, <laughs> Like, God bless you. Like, dating now can can, can really, there's a lot of different dynamics with social media and, and the apps and all that stuff. And um, what I can say is patience. And what I can say is just um, really honoring your alone time and, and dating yourself. Like, I remember when I got into the habit of having dinner by myself but making it, like, cooking for one was an event you know I would have you know my dinner and in a nice place like for a while like for a while single I was like I'll just have cereal whatever you know but I'm like no 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 no. I'm worthy of a delicious meal mm -hmm. like if I if I was dating someone I would cook a full meal. I'm like why can't I do that for myself you know nice. and so um so things like that like like really honoring yourself taking care of yourself and and just um knowing who you are so that in when the time is right and the doors are open and, and you meet that person where you're like, oh, oh, and it's not a guessing game, you know, it's not games, it's not, you know, whatever, checking IG, whatever, right. and then, you know, like, it's just, it's just right, you just know. So did you think you would fall in love with a woman? How did that go? <laughs> dude that was i had no idea that was gonna happen i i um no i i was in california and i knew my my wife's brother and um when he introduced us of course i i looked at her and i thought she was brilliant i admired her as a business person she's 10 years younger than me and she's just like on it badass like she was just all over it. and I was just like who is this and the opposite and she was the same way with me like who is this but she was a lesbian she already knew she'd been gay all her life and um when I found when I realized I was like wait a minute this is more than just like admiration was I remember um after the California trip we had exchange information because she was going to help me with business and um I remember not wanting to just call her or text her I'm like let's FaceTime and I went to see her and then I would get excited every time I like because she lived in Miami I lived in New York and I remember I'd get so excited to just see her and I was a little confused I was conflicted I was like what what are these feelings um and so I went to my mentor and I was like asking her like like this is what I'm feeling talking to this woman and and I was already like very into a spiritual journey and open and understanding that we all like we have souls and and that, you know, I was connected to to really who her soul was, whether she was a male or a female, it didn't matter. It was just I, I really was falling for this this human being who had a beautiful, you know, soul and um there was a connection. And now here's the other thing, another chapter. It was like, do I, you know not move forward and and see where this goes because i'm afraid of what other people will think oh my god my mom oh my god my family oh my god like do i do i block myself from such joy and love that i feel or do i just say courageously and boldly yes to love yes you know and <laughs> It's been my mo. I say yes. <laughs> I'm like I, I am like I said. I how do, how do you how do you deny love? You know how I. It's just it just didn't make sense for me to um, to not see where we would go, how this would unfold, and and sure enough, with it, I mean, I just knew once um, the the it was clear that we both had feelings for each other. Um, I just knew I was like, oh my God, like I could spend the rest of my life with her. Like, 
oh my goodness, like this is really happening. We got married in less than a year. I think um, that's beautiful. The, the soul. So prior to meeting this person, you never thought you could be with a woman. The thought was never like a thing for you. Uh-uh. And then you meet a soul and you're like, oh, that's a, a beautiful soul. And you just kept feeling this kind of magnetization and just, uh-huh. and you're just like, well, do I go with it or not? And that's important. You know, what, what came to mind was that societal boxing. A lot of us, what we're dealing with is society has already made a path for us, you know, and we're all fighting that. Once you go off the path, you have the eyes, you have side comments. Mm -hmm. And, you know, even even when they aren't saying anything, even if no one's looking at you, you know what the norm is and you kind of feel this internal. And a lot of this comes back to the whole loving yourself and, and being healthy and wellness is staying in tune with you, even if you're off the path. Absolutely. And even if you're off the path, it's okay. Like it's part of the journey. Um, I think what's really important about what you just said about being off the path is also having compassion for yourself, right? Like we're not perfect and okay, you got off the path. And then what a blessing you recognize that you're off the path. And what a blessing, you know, you know, a lot of times we do have resources or, or, you know, man, the moment you recognize them, I kind of, kind of got a little lost, right? And, and I have this goal, I have this vision and I got a little lost. I, um, the moment you recognize that, I think that in itself is a blessing because you can pull yourself back. You can recognize, remember who you are. And, um, and again, without hearing the external voices or, but I thought by now you would, right? That whole story, you start, oh, I should have been here by now. I should have done this by now. I should have had kids by now. That whole language, like, no, this is perfect timing. This is what I learned and I'm moving forward. Um, so much so who, who we are, right? I, I wanted to ask, do you think that the issues that you brought to your first marriage are still present within you now? Uh, No, I did. I can confidently tell you, I have done so much healing work and whatever issues my wife and I have now, they're new, they're just us. They're just like, if there's, you know what I mean? Like I, yes, each one of us brought baggage into our relationship. Both of us did, fact. But we have done so, and I think that's the beauty. That's the person you end up with is like, it's going to be ugly and, and, but it's going to be worth it. We're going to work together. It's not going to be all rainbow unicorns. And so, yeah, we both brought baggage in and, um, but we have been so committed to doing the work of like airing that shit out. Like here, here's my, here's my, we call it maleta. Like here's my suitcase. Yup, this, you know, whenever, if we've gotten triggered, you know, we've had triggers, like trigger words, trigger moments, and we will call it out. We'll call it out. And so I have to say, at this time, we've been together now five years, and um, yeah, life has brought us so many different challenges that I think it's, it was a blessing, especially in the beginning, but even, even throughout, I just feel, um, yeah, deep conversations, you know, rawness and and I'm not a confrontational person and to be able to just learn to hold my own, express myself and, and you know, she's, we balance each other out because she's a blessing and she's very raw, very true, um, tell it like it is. And um, I'm very much, you know, I don't want to hurt your feelings, like, you know, or if something, if the tone or the delivery isn't right, I'll start crying. Or even if I'm upset, I'm very emotional. Um, and in that, I brought, that brought a lot of like avoiding, like, I don't, I don't, yeah, I don't want to, I don't want to create a stir. Like, I don't want, I want to just keep the peace, but that's not good either. Cause things get built up. Right. So we've learned from each other, like, let's just air that shit out now. Like, <laughs> let's get to it. Um, so I can say confidently, thank goodness, anything like, 
I've done thing, work to heal from like daddy issues, anything from my parent, like my relationship with my mom is really is so much better. And again, um, it's while, and I'll bring this up, it's very, very sensitive and I understand it's a scary topic, you know, getting diagnosed with breast cancer, um, it, while it is scary, you can use it as a healing mechanism to get your shit right. Like any fears, any any past grievances, anything that literally is stuck in your body, you can do like for me, I I was in such a mission to heal, but heal with love, right? And so I wanted to improve my relationships. Where did I go wrong? Where did I not speak up? Where did I, you know, lie to myself? Where did I lie to others? What did I what can I, you know, improve so that because I just know like tomorrow isn't promise, you know, it thrust me into the present moment. So how can I have this conversation? Um, and so, yeah, it took me to healing. I mean, healing upon like dark nights of the soul, they call it crying and convulsions, but whew, I am free. <laughs> so, so we're like you, you said, called to be leaders, right? And the reason why I do this is because I've had like really amazing conversations and I felt like someone could benefit from this. So that's my whole thing, you know? I know a lot of people who struggle with diagnosis, so I want to come back to that. And I know a lot of people who struggle with their identity, you know, whether it's from their parents, from society, and also from the church. So these things are like weighing on them and they're carrying it all the time. And, you know, they walk into your space and, you know, where do you begin? Do you start with the wellness? Do you start by talking? How do you process this through? Like, what's the... The first step um, is f physicality, like, like, and a lot of times in the movement, like in my movement classes, literally it's like a letting go, right? So my formula is love and we spell love with three V's. And the first, you know, step L is letting go, letting go of toxic thoughts, right? And just like I was saying, that mental activity that can be so unhelpful. Um, but a lot of people can't, it's not, you know, it's not like I'm letting go. So... How can I help this person? You know, the way um, we work is how can I help them feel good? So feel good, feel confident, enough to know that they're supported, enough to know that they're loved in this moment and, the, and, and break free and let go of the past for this moment and let go of the future, the anxiety. And that's by being present. How can I bring someone present is movement. And so a lot of times it's like uh, uh, in, in challenges and stuff, first thing in the morning we're doing is these um, activations and it's a releasing. We do this movement where it's like, ah, exhale, exhale. And I have them literally visualize fear, uh, you know, illness, this, like, ah, like breathing. And then we get them into movement, feeling good, speaking, speaking affirmations. Instead of standing in front of the mirror, I'm mm -hmm. happy, I'm happy, I'm happy. When the mind is like, no, you're not, <laughs> right? When, when, you know, get to these people, like getting the body moving, even if you, even if you can't stand up, even if you're in a wheelchair sitting, like just, I mean, shoulders moving, the, getting the lymphatic going, that you feel confident, you feel good, and you're willing, you're at least willing, I am so done, I am letting go. Um, that is the physicality, the movement is usually first. And then we talk about nutrition. Showing this person, you know, clients, a lot of challenges is like, so like show yourself first before you ask for any respect from anyone else show yourself and your body respect by eating more real food i don't even i don't even say the diet i don't even say, eat more real food add in more of the greens and veggies add in more fruit add in more water most of the, most of us are just de we are chronically dehydrated mm -hmm. add more water yeah why you know getting headaches and migraines water you know and and so um and so we go into that and, and then once you start like you're feeling good you feel all confident you wear you know like you're like stress then it's like oh let's go over the o open your heart mm. let's start forgiving open your crack that heart open and 
And um, I teach a lot of my, my clients uh, the prayer of Ho'oponopono, which is just four statements. And it's, it's a process of almost like it's an erasing. And it's a choice to cut the cords. And every moment is an opportunity to just erase and forgive. Forgive yourself for allowing any disrespect, allowing any circumstance that you knew very well, like, mm, I shouldn't have been there, shouldn't have said that, shouldn't have done that, whatever. And then forgiving others, right? And that's not easy either. So it's opening your heart. And then the next step is visualization. Mm. So do you, can you see yourself healed? Can you see yourself successful? Can you see yourself? And, you know, it could be losing weight. It can be, you know, from a, a, a physical pain, emotion. But can you, but can you see it? Can you, I mean, it, you can want it, but like, I mean, close your eyes and see, like, who are you surrounded by? Like, I used to literally just visualize, like, myself making the announcement that I am healed. And, and I would walk healed, talk healed, like, this is who I am. And, and, and visualize success, visualize, you know, again, we, the, the community I'm building is called Wellness Warriors, right? So visualizing yourself as this wellness warrior, just confident, see it, feel it. What does this smell like? Where are you? You know, and a lot of times, you know, you're not even living where you're like people are like I'm on the beach and I'm on, you know, you, but constantly. And then so that's the first V. And then you take them into the second V. And the second V is about voice, voice your truth. So you're feeling confident, you're eating a little better, you're starting to forgive people. Now you're getting clearer on who you are, what you want, and how can you articulate it without being, you know, mean or rude. How can you articulate it um, gracefully? And, you know, a lot of times, especially with cancer, it's, it's people pleasing. Like there's a character trait for cancer, especially breast cancer, right? Over nurturing others, over, you know, you know, just really... And, and what was really crazy was learning that people pleasing was part of like, you just, you, you felt like, I'm just trying to keep the peace. It's okay. Like, it's okay. Like, I'm fine. I'm fine. I'm fine. You know, and you're like, I'm fine. <laughs> so in that, you're not really honoring who you are and your needs and, you know, making it clear of your wants, you know, and a, and a lot, a, a lot of women are getting diagnosed with, with breast cancer, you know? So it's about voicing your needs, um, voicing your truth. What is your true nature? And it could be a work, right? Uh, you could be working the passionless job. How many, how many people suffer from that? Just kind of like on a, just going with the flow and not really expressing and, and, and doing what they love. I'm not saying to, you, you have to quit your job right away, but it's like, are you creating space to really do what you love? Time. Are you creating time? Or you numbing, you know, going home, I'm just going to have a drink. I'm going to turn on Netflix. I'm just going to numb, whatever. So, so voice. Um, and then the third B, the next step is about vibrating higher. Now we want to keep your, your vibration, your frequency. We want to keep it high. We want to keep it elevated. What helps? Nature. Making sure you get outside, connect with na nature, breath work continuing the movement, making sure you're e eating living foods, right? So now we're like, now we're stepping in and like, are you, have you added green juices? Have you added, you know, living food, not, you know, less of the packaging, more, more like you went to the produce aisle and your cart is filled with yeah. fruits and veggies and like, right? Keeping your frequency high. And then finally is the empowerment, you know, the E. Is, is really empowering yourself with these tools and resources and community. And that's what we're about, building that community. And ha so that you can magnetize more positive um, uh, experiences because it comes in waves, right? I used to think, man, like, I remember, like, I remember leaving the police force and I left on such a high. I was like, I did it. I took the leap and I'm getting married. This is, I was getting married at the time. I'm getting married and I'm teaching wellness. Like this is it. I did one of the hardest things. I left a career, blah, blah, blah. And I fell flat on my face. That was just like a little, that was just the beginning of like, Oh, I have, I have to, it's not what I thought was if you did all of this stuff, if you ate healthy, you do yoga, you meditate, like, 
oh, we're in a little bubble and we're going to be okay. No, these are tools so that when life does happen, we know, let me pause, let me not react, <laughs> right? Because a lot of times if we, we react, we add more issues. And let me handle this with grace and what resources and tools. And I think what I'm learning is the quicker you can remember these resources and tools, the less chaos you create in your own world. Sure. Right? Because it's like a challenge will happen. How long are we like, what the F? I can't believe this is happening. You see, this is my life. Complain, 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 complain. So you're either complaining for a day and then you're like, hold up, hold up. And you remember, you know, oh, I can, I can, you remember like, this is why I practice. Let me go, let me step outside. Let me catch a breath. Like you remember these resources and that's why we have positive community. Or you can play victim and complain, complain, complain for like a month and tell everybody, tell, you know, like you, but can you believe this is happening to me and not really, and not really create change in your life, right? And not, you're not really looking for the solution. You're just complaining. So I think, um, that you know the formula that I create love um, helps people kind of like if you if you choose love I say on a daily basis it kind of brings you back a little bit faster when life happens what's the e again empowerment empower to empower yourself with these resources tools and like I said community yeah empowerment and community I like that um, so much of like everything you said and that daily meditation and that daily mantra, that's how you are able, like you're saying, you build up your tool, your toolkit. Yeah. And when things okay. happen, you're able to pull from your toolkit instead of spiraling out. And then it takes you three months to remember what's in your toolkit and start mm -hmm. again. You, you can snap back, hopefully the next day within the hour or you know, minutes after. Right. And it's, it's, and snap back. It doesn't mean everything is okay. When I say snap back of creating space so that you can find a solution or handle whatever it is with grace, instead of saying something you'll regret or doing something you regret, you know, if we, if, you know, especially now, if someone's in heat and you're, you know, and you're heated and you want to send an email, the text, the social media, like, you know, you, all of a sudden you see something and you just respond, like, like it can swirl into something really nasty or how can I choose love right now? Pause. And then whether the situation even needs a response, you decide in that moment, you know, and, or you find a solution and, and. Again, I'm not speaking of there's an emergency or you need to react fast. I'm, this is, this is, I'm talking about, you know, with, I mean, a lot of people are being triggered. And again, with, again, with healing too, in my healing process, right? There was shock. There was fear when I first found out my diagnosis. Um, but thank God, by the grace of God, I have had a partner that was very much like, we're going to figure it out. Pull, we're going to figure this out. And we went into prayer. And then what are our next steps? compared to oh my god oh my god oh my god my life oh my god oh my and it could it could have gotten dark really fast with no action or action that i may have regretted because i was you know not in my body not in my space creating space and tuning in to you know what was the name of the center that you went to hippocrates health institute it was a uh, it's a wellness center in west palm beach um, I, I feel like you were already doing all of those things. I think it was just a uh, grounding in, yeah. in those things and you found more community there and support. Yeah, it was interesting because I think that was one of the shock, you know, shockers was that, yeah, I was doing a lot of those things and that I learned. There was a lot of things that I'm like, I, I know this, you know, was I practicing them habitually? No. Um, they were, especially the eating, like vegan and, and there was dabbling in like really, um, focusing. I had no, I had no idea about what sprouts were. Like I didn't know anything about living food. Um, but there was a emotional stuff that I knew that, um, I was like, Oh, I caught that one night. I wasn't, like I said, I was, there were things that I was holding on to. There was more anger and there was more, um, 
resentment that I thought was still in my body that I thought was still like when I was able to talk I what Hippocrates gave me was a safe space right this beautiful space to kind of come back and and um like I said listen to to my voice and um it, it almost was it was it was that's what I can say it gave me a safe space to remember who I, who I am and to love myself. That's where I got it from, to love myself back to health in the sense of, yeah, a lot of the physical stuff I knew. I, I was drinking the celery juice and eating plant-based and bouncing on the rebounder. I was already known as the wellness warrior. I had like been practicing yoga, but there's a difference of like practicing it and then like it being your essence and it like your being, the being of like, this energy like i understand now like someone can do yoga like do the yoga someone can do the meditation but man are you when you're when you're doing the yoga are you are you in it are you inviting the holy spirit are you understanding the, the energy are you on like are you it being are you being the meditation even if it's for two minutes like it's not, okay, my two minutes, I was still, like, I mean, were you so present? You felt every little breathe, like, you know, there's a difference of doing, check. And I was very, like, doing, check, done, boom, you know? I did it because I am very goal-oriented. Right. You know? So, um, so yeah. what were you, it, it sounds like there's, like, you had leftover stuff from, like, 15 years ago. What, what, how does, how do, how do you, like not get to that stuff what do you mean how do you not how do you not Cause, get to because your... you're saying you were holding it and to oh. me it, it sounds like you were holding it from like long time ago yeah i mean i think um my personal journey was that um i i i fell in love with with wellness and i fell in love with fitness and um, I ended up using it more as to avoid certain things. So when things um, went wrong, I would go to a yoga class instead of talk about it. Um, you know, when things got really dark, I signed up for a competition. I, you know, I wanted to be in the gym. I didn't, you know, there were times where there's this beautiful balance, right? I, as a warrior, like tough and armor, but there were times where I, I didn't give myself an opportunity to, to just what, what I remember. My, one of the nurses, I say this all the time at Hippocrates was like, give yourself permission to be a beautiful mess. And, um, there were times in my life I didn't give myself that permission. You know, I literally would like cry at night by myself. And then the next day, you know, just, I gotta get into the gym. I gotta, you know, do what I gotta do, and um, yeah, and and wore a little bit more of an armor than I should have, you know. So you were able to drop it all and just like just kind of let it all out and and let it go. Yeah, I I also believe too um, when I got there, like. I transitioned, I moved from New York to Miami and remember I fell in love with a woman and there was also lingering, lingering um, feelings of trying to discover who I was and I couldn't, I just, I was like, I'm 30 something years old and I like, when I got diagnosed, I was 39 and I was just like, I should have shit figured out already, you know, <laughs> like, um, so I, I feel there was a lot, there was just a lot of, of questions and things that I um I never got clear on for myself and those three weeks at Hippocrates going through a detox like literally releasing like physically releasing but also sweating the emotional everything um was was a, a beautiful part and that was just the beginning of healing because remember that was just three weeks that was just three weeks and I fell in love with the actual protocols and the people and what it represented that that's why and thank goodness by the grace of God my 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 wife supported 
the protocols when we came home. She figured out, you know, ways to, we were going to get the juicers. We were going to, you know, how to grow, you know, we we're going to sit and learn how to grow because it, again, it wasn't just about the doing. It was about the pause that it created to soak the seeds, to put the soil in the tray, the love it took, you know, to water every single day, twice a day, the connection. I get most because like something so scary from my wife and I so close and I got very lucky that she was so supportive and and so yeah like we would use that quality time of she would put the soil in the tray and spray the like the steps and we would make jokes if somebody forgot the steps and it's those moments those pause that's the healing not just the doing yeah da, 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 and you not being present you know like it was those moments of pause and I think that's, I think, you know, sometimes I, I, I feel people miss that when it comes to, like, I work with people who they get diagnosed and they're just so, and, and while the, the doctor's appointments are important and the supplements and the medication, but you get so lost in all of it that you, I'm like, have you gone to the, have you gone to the beach? Like, have you, have you gone to the park? Like, have you reconnected to self? Have you connected with your family? Have you... You know, and, and I feel when it comes to the spouse and the family, it's like they also need, you know, mm -hmm. they need a community. They need therapy they, because everyone gets so worried about the person who gets diagnosed. So it's, it's like there's this fear everywhere and just let's get to the doctor or let's do this. And I, um, it's just a, it's a reminder of like a lot of times these serious illnesses are, is to remind you of how beautiful life is in, in the ordinary that, you know, drinking this water in this moment can be so such an extraordinary moment because thank goodness I have water. Thank goodness I have this cool bottle. Wow. Like imagine looking at this water, drinking it and like feeling like it can be such a blissful moment yet we're chasing where, you know, a lot of us can for a long time I was just, chasing no the next big trip the next big vacation the next big bleh when in this moment it's absolutely beautiful the simplicity finding finding joy in the simplicity and not just in the the picture perfect moments not just in the the, the big milestones just finding joy in the everyday if it's watering your plants like enjoying that watering right as you were talking about that i could imagine someone who's just like buying the juice and because you're just buying the juice you're just drinking it and you're not really present with the whole process and everything it it sounds like the healing wasn't just the juice it was the process the you cleaning know. the chopping the the conversation i would have you know still the 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 ladies at the farm that we go to to pick up our organic like the people that i met there and they are and they you know we connected and they're like i'm doing a juice cleanse and then the ripple effect the entire thing and you can still experience okay you're you're sure you but you can still experience that like if someone doesn't they really just don't want to juice you want to buy the juice okay so who's handing you that juice like how did you pay what was the exchange who's there who's the cashier did you talk to them who's making the juice how did how was the juice made who's the owners of the store like be like the connection right that human connection to the food the fuel that is put into your body and i and I, I love, I fell in, and that's why we laugh. I'm like, thank God. I fell in love with the entire process, the chopping, the cleaning of the juicer, the, like I created just a really like a ritual around it. And sometimes I would play games. I'm like, if we have, you know, I would like race myself. I'm like, let's see how fast I can clean the juice. Like silly things. I'm an only child. So I was always entertaining myself anyway. So, um, so I, you know, or, um, creating different recipes just you know i re i thoroughly enjoyed um watching the sprouts grow I, I still do um but not everyone's like that and i feel you know and that's okay find your way in your protocol in your process to enjoy and and be present so we're talking about being here we're talking about healing 
we're going to take a brief break. But we're talking about um, healing, being present, and being in tune. And all of these things flow through you. And I think a part of that, if you can stay there, is the key to wellness. Mm. You said that very well, yes. <laughs> all right. Stay with us. We'll be back for part two. <laughs> 